Good evening, everyone. And welcome to this historic event. Julia Gillard in conversation. <laughs> Julia Gillard in conversation with Anne Summers. <laughs> My name is Dr. Katrina Wallace, and I'm the CEO of Fifth Quadrant, and we are very, very proud to be the event partners of the Anne Summers Conversations this evening. So this is a very significant event. It is the launch of the Anne Summers Conversations event series, where Anne will interview live, in an environment like this, extremely important people and which better person to start this amazing event series than our former Prime Minister and first woman Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. to you how this evening is going to work. In a few moments, I will introduce both Anne and Julia to the stage, and they will talk for about 50 minutes together. And then at the end of that, I will moderate about half an hour of question and answer time. So this is an opportunity for you, the audience, to ask Julia those questions you've wanted to ask. So the way we're going to do that is to have five microphones set out around the concert hall. We'll have one down here, then we'll go to the back, we'll come down to the front here, to the back, and of course, to the people behind us, we'll have a microphone right here. So as Anne uh, is concluding her conversation with Julia, she will signal the time. And those of you who are keen to ask a question, please make your way to the microphones at that stage. Now, what is very important for the question time, ladies and gentlemen, we do want there to be questions. And please, I know there's a lot of you who would like to just make statements or uh, perhaps say something to, to Julia, um, but please can you limit it to, to questions that you really want to ask. And there'll be people at the microphones uh, to assist you. And if you do <laughs> to, to assist you, ask the right question. So if you do have, um, if there is anything that I, that I think uh, may not be appropriate, I do have the power, ladies and gentlemen, just to cut that mic off. So please, <laughs> let's keep it real. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Also, want to let you, let you know we're delighted that the event this evening is being broadcast on ABC News 24. That's live right here now. We are also going to be running a program tonight on ABC, straight after Late Line. Uh, ABC Radio National uh, Big Ideas will do a radio broadcast at 8 p.m. and then ABC's TV Radio National will broadcast the event again tomorrow at 11 a.m. So we're making sure that as many Australians and also um, overseas guests can really access this incredible historic event. So um, I would like now to, uh, to also mention those of you who are keen tweeters, that we are running a Twitter hashtag and we really encourage you to tweet during the event tonight. So the hashtag is hash Julia Sid. So hash J U L I A S Y D. And we'll pick those tweets up later on this evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important in an event like this that we start with a welcome to country. Please welcome Donna Ingram from the Metropolitan Land Council. Donna.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure and my great honour to be here representing Australia's First People and the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council to offer welcome to country for Australia's first female Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, in conversation with Anne Summers. This important cultural protocol shows respect for and recognition to the unique position of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australian culture and history. We are meeting tonight on the land of the Gadigal, who were one of 29 clans of the Eora Nation, which is bordered by the Hawkesbury, the Georges and the Nepean Rivers. I'm an Aboriginal woman who proudly identifies with the Wiradjuri Nation through my family connections from a town called Cowra in central West New South Wales. I was born on Gadigal land and I've lived most of my life and raised my four children on this land. I'm also very proud to be part of the oldest living culture in the world, the Aboriginal culture of Australia, with our unique and distinct heritage, cultures and identities. I acknowledge the Gadigal, their spirits and ancestors who will always remain with the land, Mother Earth, and thank them for their ongoing custodianship and for allowing us to gather here this evening for this important conversation. I pay my respects to our elders, both past and present, and realise the sacrifices made by our leaders to create a better future for Aboriginal people. I do this as a reminder and as a tribute to elders and those who have gone before us to fight for land rights, justice and equity for our communities. I extend my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from all clans and nations who are here this evening. I also recognise our non-Aboriginal sisters and brothers who walk beside us to stamp out discrimination in all its forms for a more inclusive Australia. I now offer you a warm and sincere welcome to the land of the Gadigal of the Eora Nation and wish you a safe stay on the land and safe travel from the land. On behalf of Metropolitan Land Council, I wish you all a wonderful evening at this historic event that I'm very pleased to be able to share with you all. In closing, we remember that this is, was and always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you very much. And I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this beautiful land here in Sydney, the Gadigal Band of the Eora people. And I pay my respects to the elders past and present. And I would also like to warmly welcome and acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that we have here in the room with us tonight. Now, let me, it is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, have the great pleasure to introduce your host for this evening, and the publisher and editor of Anne Summers Reports, the host of Anne Summers Conversation, well-known journalist and commentator, Anne Summers. to see, I would like you to welcome our former Prime Minister and our first woman Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. sure you all recognise that song. <laughs> Respect. Respect. Something that's been sadly lacking in our political system in recent years. It's my very great pleasure and honour to be able to welcome Julia Gillard here this evening. <laughs> a 
as we know, her first public appearance since the uh, night of June 26, when she stopped being our Prime Minister. Since, um, since that time... <laughs> Before I start the questions, I've just plenty of opportunity for expressions of emotion, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to just acknowledge you, the audience. I mean, this is phenomenal. I don't know about you, Jopra. <laughs> <laughs> and to be here in front of an audience of 2,600 people all around us, um, we could have, this, this event sold out in hours, as you know. We could have sold it out probably 10 times over. And again, in Melbourne tomorrow night, we're going to be talking to another 2,000 people in addition to all of those who are watching it on television and who will be listening to it in coming days on, uh, on broadcasts and podcasts and what have you. So I really, I know that there are people in the room tonight who've uh, flown in from Perth, who've flown from Brisbane, who've bust down from Newcastle, who didn't... <laughs> <laughs> and who couldn't resist taking photographs of themselves in the bus and tweeting them as they came. <laughs> So this is quite an occasion, quite an occasion. I want to thank you all for being here, being part of this incredible night. But the very first question I want to ask you tonight, Julia Gennardi, three months when you since you disappeared from our nightly TV news, um, and we've only just seen a few glimpses of you in the last couple of days, as well as your tweets on election night. People have said to me, how is she? Is she okay? So that's my question tonight. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> yes, Anne, I am okay, and I should say better for being here. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I venture to say that uh, when it comes to doing opinion polls, probably nobody in this room was asked what they thought. <laughs> um, yesterday was your birthday. Yes, it was. <laughs> Um, you, flew, <laughs> you flew back in from New York yesterday morning. You've been in America for a week. You flew back in, so I guess so you haven't yet had time to uh, engage in much birthday celebrations. I managed to have a wonderful birthday celebration. Oh. Flying back in from the States, at least it's an easier journey to get back into the time zone. So I flew in yesterday morning to Melbourne and spent the day with Tim at our home in Altona. We are moving to Adelaide, but we're still in Altona now. And uh, <laughs> fans of Altona, that's good. <laughs> uh, ac actually, <laughs> our Altona residence is on a Hobson's Bay walking tour. So periodically, when I, when I come home, there are 40 or 50 people gathered ta taking photos, unfortunately, of the weeds in the front yard. but. Uh, <laughs> Tim uh, cooked up a wonderful barbecue lunch and we had a couple of friends around, including a friend who's very dear to me and has had a very big battle with breast cancer, which she's on the winning side of at the moment, and her hair is back, and that was just lovely. We had a great day. So this is the same Tim Matheson that you allegedly have separated from? <laughs> yes, this is the one and the same Tim Matheson. Uh, there's only one Tim. Uh, and that, I think, is a case study, even post-politics, uh, in some of the foibles of the Australian media. Uh, unbeknownst to me, it was reported in Women's Day that we were, you know, in some sort of trouble. Uh, so I wasn't even, you know, asked by Women's Day what comment I might have on this matter. And I guess, uh, I guess you expect the women's magazines uh, to be, you know, putting in a bit of gossip. What I didn't quite expect was this to appear in the Australian Financial Review. Uh, not, not a matter, as I can understand, related to the balance of stocks and shares on the ASX, uh, and not something we were ever given a proper opportunity to comment on. Uh, it was known I was in New York, that was uh, reported, and, you know, a call at 2am New York time seeking comment, and by the time that call was returned,